I'm Kathy Fosno. I was a professor for many years at City College of New York. I founded Mathematics in the City, a national center of in-service for math education. I'm the author of various books and articles on mathematics education, including the Context for Learning series from Heinemann. And I'm the senior um, content advisor with the academic team for Dreambox Learning. One of my favorite things about Dreambox is the way that we deal with assessment. It's not a drop here and a step here and a test here. It's seamless. It's formative assessment at its best in that we're accumulating data every time a child sits down at the computer. We're accumulating data every time a child manipulates one of the digital manipulatives because we're coding what they're doing with the manipulative. This informs instruction in a way that's dynamic rather than static. When school districts um, don't have a vehicle like Dreambox, they tend to approach formative assessment by doing three or four tests during the year. And assuming that the first one gives them baseline data, and the second one a couple of months later tells how much progress kids are making, and a third one later on in the year kind of prepares you for the fourth one that you're going to use by the end of the year that is your outcome-based summative. Um, Heraclitus once said, you can't step in the stream in the same place twice. I like thinking about that when I think about assessment. I think when we use a test, it's a static form of assessment because all we're doing is seeing what the child can do on that test, in that moment, on that day, given the way we've crafted the task, the tasks, the items. In no way are we measuring children's real understanding or real learning because learning is far too complex to take static one-shot glimpses. Formative assessment, genuine formative assessment, can only be done the way we're doing it in Dreambox, meaning that it should be mining the data continuously. It should be collecting data and compiling it so that we're getting a full picture of what the child actually knows and then sharing that with both teachers and parents. And that's um, how we're informing instruction. Then it's truly formative assessment. One of the things we try to do in Dreambox is build multiple tools that allow multiple ways into content. And some children choose one over another, like some better than others, do better with some than they do with others. And we also build repertoires that way of multiple ways to represent um, concepts. I think exploration is absolutely critical for learning. Children need many opportunities to try things out, to wonder if they work. Games can be used to support children. I think games should have many openings and possibilities that should not just be a game for practice and reinforcement, but should be a game where kids are actually exploring and learning by that exploration. I think when teachers are watching what children are doing in Dreambox, they are actually learning a lot of math themselves. I have a lot of teachers tell me, I had no idea I could do some of those strategies for computation. Oh my goodness, some of the strategies kids are learning in Dreambox are strategies I didn't even know. Many teachers will say, the only way I know to subtract is to regroup. That's the way I learned. And now all of a sudden, children are solving 71 minus 36 by saying it's equivalent to 70 minus 35. And I'm going, oh my gosh, wait a minute, is that kid right? Um, so teachers are learning a lot as they are watching what children are learning in the environment. But I think um, platforms like Dreambox, a really intelligent, adaptive learning